Hi, second grade. Earlier this week, you worked on counting money. Now, another form of measurement is telling time. Oh, upside down. Um, I went around my house and I counted all the clocks and I actually have the same amount of analog clocks that I do digital clocks. Now the clock that I probably use the most is the one that is on my phone, but it's still really important to be able to tell time on an analog clock, which is the clock that is in our classroom. Now let's go ahead and get started. So second grade math, telling time. Today, I want you to be able to say, I can tell time to the nearest five minutes on digital and analog clocks. And I also want you to be able to say, I can tell the difference between AM and PM. Now you might be wondering what those are. We're gonna figure that out today. So first clocks, there are digital clocks. You might have a digital clock on your watch. I know I do with my Apple watch. You might have a digital alarm clock that wakes you up in the morning in your room. Um, microwaves, ovens, they have digital clocks. You can buy these fancy digital clocks that tell you the day and the date and the temperature outside and you could set three alarms. Digital clocks have a lot of options. We also have analog clocks. Analog clocks are what you see in the classroom. Um, lots of people use them for decor in their homes. And you can see here, these are Roman numeral numbers. There are also watches that are still analog clocks and those look um, a little bit fancier than the digital clock. So AM and PM. AM means anti-meridium. Now we learned earlier this year what a prefix is. An anti is a prefix that means before. And meridium means midday or noon. So anti-meridium means before midday or before noon. So from midnight all the way until noon, that is anti-meridium time or AM. PM stands for post-meridium. Post, our prefix, means after, just like you take a post test after you've learned all the content. And meridium, again, means midday or noon. So post-meridium means after midday or afternoon. So our PM times, our post-meridium times, are from noon all the way until midnight. Let's look at that all together. So from midnight all the way to midnight, there are 24 hours in our day. The time at midnight is nighttime. Noon is the middle of the day, and that is our AM, our anti-meridium time. Then, again from noon, all the way to midnight, nighttime, we have post-meridium, PM time. So noon is where it switches from AM to PM, and midnight is where it switches from PM to AM. At midnight until about six o'clock, we are sleeping. At six o'clock, it's time to wake up and go for the day. At noon, we eat lunch. I like pepperoni pizza. Then we continue on with our day from noon until about six when we eat again, and then we go to bed. This might be easier to look at with a schedule. So I know that at 6 a.m. I wake up. At 9 a.m. I start working. At 12 p.m. I eat lunch. And at 12 p.m. is when we switched from a.m. to p.m. 3 p.m. workout, 6 p.m. eat dinner, 9 p.m. go to bed, 12 a.m. Oh, that's where it switches again. We are sleeping and we will keep sleeping. So we wake up we're working, we eat lunch, maybe you work out, eat dinner, go to bed, and then we wake up and start it all over again. Now, knowing a.m. and p.m. is important because when you look at a clock, you know that if it's between midnight and noon, it's a.m. Not all clocks tell you that, especially analog clocks, but you know that when you're in this part of your day, that it is a.m. It's the morning. 
p.m. is noon all the way to midnight, that's your daytime hours. That's when you're doing most of your stuff, and that is p.m. Let's talk about telling time. So digital clocks, you can read those pretty easily. It tells you the numbers right there. We have our hours and then the decimal and our minutes. Now an analog clock is a little more tricky. So we're gonna work on telling time to the nearest hour. I've got my blank clock here and I have hands on my clock. The first hand I have is, hmm, do you know what it is? I have another hand. What do those tell me? The hour hand is the short hand. And our minute hand is the long hand. We look at the hour to figure out what hour it is. And these big numbers tell us. The minute hand takes a little bit of extra work. But we're going to figure that out as we go. So that clock was showing me 3 o'clock. The hour hand is the short hand, and the minute hand is the long hand. Now, what would two o'clock look like? We know that a clock is at the top. We're pointing at the very top of our clock to the minute. Now our hour hand needs to be pointing towards two. That's two o'clock. What about eight o'clock? Where's the minute hand pointing? To the top, that's our o'clock and the hour hand is pointing to the eight. Now a whole hour is 60 minutes long. We're gonna work on telling time to the nearest five minutes. Can you count by five? If you can count by five, you can count around a clock. So we have our minute hand and we have our hour hand. These are the numbers for the hours. Now we're gonna count by five around the clock for our minutes. We start at zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. And we're back at the top, which would be 60 total minutes, which equals one hour. Now, when we look at a clock, we have to read where the minute hand is and where the hour hand is. Three o'clock, we know, is at our minute hand is pointing to the top and our hour hand is pointing to the three. When we go to 305, I want you to see our minute hand changed a lot, but so did our hour hand. Our minute hand is now pointing to the one, which is five minutes, and our hour hand is also going to move as the minute hand moves around the clock. So this is 305, 310, 315. 315 has 15 minutes. A quarter or a fourth of an hour has passed, this first fourth. Now we're at 320, 325, 3.30, you can see my hour hand is moving and my minute hand. 3.30, that is a half hour. We have gone 30 full minutes around the clock. And we have also gone two sections of 15 minutes, so two quarter hours around the clock. Now we're at 3.35, 3.40, 3.45, 3.50, 3rd quarter. So we are at 15, 15, 15 minutes. 350. Now I want to pause here and show you. Look at how close our hour hand is to the four. It's not on the four yet though because just like the minute hand, it's moving its way around the clock. So it is still in the hour of three and it is 350. 355, it's even closer, and now we have made it a whole hour to four o'clock, which is 60 minutes. Now, second graders, I want you to go work on being able to tell time to the nearest five minutes on a digital and analog clock and be able to tell the difference between a.m. and p.m. time. I can't wait to see what you learn this week.